Hello and thank you so much for joining me. I am Pastor Maxwell and I'm here. I want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to you, depending on your time zone. I want to welcome you to this very segment of our broadcast. I am so, so pleased to meet you via this platform on Engine Speak. Please, if you have not subscribed to my channel here on Engine Speak, I urge you to do so. If you go to uh, YouTube, my YouTube channel is there. Maxwell, now we're here. If you go to X, I am there by the grace of God. If you go to TikTok or Instagram on Facebook, the same name, Maxwell, now we're here. Now we're here is spelled double N A W U I H E. That is now we're here. And um, this very important aspect of our broadcast deals with the issue of the price hike of fuel. You know that Nigeria operates. Uh, what we call mono economy mono economy that means an economy that is only coming from one source one source that is what is called mono economy and the mono economy of nigeria is oil and gas oil and gas there is no other um main stream of income or major source of the economy of the country apart from oil and gas and um the oil and gas exploration has lasted more than 50 years. You know, Shell came to Nigeria uh, for close to 70 years, if I'm not mistaken. If I cannot, uh, I cannot actually place my finger on the exact date or the year that Shell resumed operation in Nigeria. But I know that the first place that the oil exploration started was in Imo State. In Imo State. That was the first place that Shell came and started operation in nigeria so what is going on with the fuel price hike fuel price hike yesterday i bought at the rate of 1300 naira that was the rate i bought i bought a fuel of just fifteen thousand to uh just to top fuel on my tank to enable us one or two errands yesterday but to my consternation the fifteen thousand naira fuel i bought was not able to cover up to 50 kilometers and it was exhausted if not that i had fuel already in the tank we would have been stranded yesterday and today i said no i'm not gonna buy another fuel because it's biting everybody so hard both those that are highly placed and those that are not we all are in the same country we go to this to the same grocery stores we go to the same uh, supermarket to the same shopping complexes or plazas we buy at the same rate and one thing that appears to be so of great advantage to those at the top is because they are at the decision making positions that's where they are they make the decision to their own advantage but somehow it also affects them because it's always boomerang okay so fuel price hike media group wants immediate reversal media group wants immediate reversal they want the reversal of the fuel price that has gone to the high heavens that is where it is now the high heavens that is where the price is the common man in the street cannot afford it it is complicating them all the fate and the condition of the common man of nigeria that is already accessibated it is compounding it it is complicating issues for the poor masses both the clergy i am a pastor is affecting me as a pastor of a congregation because i have my members today we just closed service about some hours ago of course the plans and the vision of the project of the church members are dependent on the economy of the country we know that god performs miracles but then there are people who are the helm of affairs that formulate policies which in turn affect everyone that is in the country including the church members including the pastor including the bishops the doctors including those that don't believe in god the atheist everyone is affected the muslims the same so the media group has joined other well-meaning citizens of the country to call on the federal government led by president bola Ahmed Tunubu, to reverse immediately to reverse with immediate effect, this current fuel price hike. And um, 
we're going into the details of it a right group volunteer media advocacy for accountable leadership vmaal expresses worry over the recent increase in fuel price to 1000 per liter that is the official price i just told you a couple of seconds ago that i bought at the rate of 1300 naira okay likewise some other people but official price is 1000 how much was it during the time of jonathan and the time of musa yaradua how much was it around 47 naira and then later on 180 naira okay so how much was fuel during the time of buhari and how much is it now now that dollar i made it to has taken over the reins of affair and you know that he is the minister of petroleum i've said it several times in my previous broadcast that muhammad Buhari was the minister of petroleum the minister of petroleum for eight consecutive years uninterruptedly there was no audit for eight consecutive years no accountability no transparency corruption all their dealings were all shrouded mad in corruption who is going to audit the president when the president is the minister of petroleum who is going to audit the president who who will do that nobody did until the former president completed his second tenure whether by proxy or by himself that is a story for a different day okay he completed it dollar made the tenable assumed office as the president of nigeria and also said no my predecessor was in this office of petroleum as the minister for eight uninterrupted years i am going to step into the same office and that is exactly what he did and he is the incumbent president and the current minister of petroleum under his supervision under his supervision in his administration and tenure both as a minister of the petroleum and the president of the federal republic of nigeria the pump price of oil officially now is 1000 naira now what does it mean the 1000 naira we are talking about now is from the nnpc but if it is official pump price that means nnpc will be selling at the rate of 1000 naira then the private filling stations as i told you some are selling 1004 some are selling 1300 okay so that is it now even if the nnpc is not selling at the rate of 1000 naira the difference between 900 and 1000 is nothing to write home about what will the common man do with 100 naira if i may ask so you can now find out that the fuel hike in price it is a bad omen and it is a kind of economic emasculation and strangulation that is targeting the common masses in the street it's not affecting those at the top i know that it affects them indirectly because they are dependent and they are cronies or their cronies their dependents and cronies i must be correct their dependents and their cronies would be depending on them relying on them for their livelihood and the sustenance of whatever project they want to carry out on their family the training in school the school fees and other projects across the country even those that are in the diaspora they have a lot of dependents and they have a lot of cronies who are expecting one or two stipends from them who are expecting them you know to do certain goodwill or philanthropic activities or gestures goodwill to them to help them pull through life and when they come with different kind of budget and different kind of requests or demands or requests they cannot find it easy to give them the amount of money they needed at a point in time okay it's affecting everybody but the most affected the worst hit the worst hit are the common men in the street who will speak for them who will speak for them the house of representatives recently the minority caucus the called on the federal republic of nigeria or the federal government led by Bala Ahmed Tinubu to reverse the current petroleum pump price to reverse it we are not just talking about the fuel which is petrol which is pms premium motor spirit that's not the only thing we are talking about here we are talking about kerosene we are talking about the bitumen we are talking about diesel we are talking about gas these things are affected their prices have gone to high heavens and the common man in the street can no longer breathe 
they are not allowed to breathe by the political class this policy is anti-people this policy of the present president of the country bola ahmed Tinubu, is anti-economy what bola ahmed Tinubu should be doing now is to prove that people that did not trust that did not repose confidence in him in the 2023 election to be a better president he is supposed to prove them wrong by becoming a better president not to affirm their doubt not to affirm their doubt their disapproval not to affirm it not to say to them you were right that i was a very worse that i was going to be a worse president you were right thumbs up you know you were right he is not supposed to prove them right that is how intelligent people do at least for the first one year or two years in office and ultimately the first tenure being four years he is supposed if he is a smart politician if he is he was supposed to prove them wrong that the people that didn't vote for him will now say child even though i didn't vote for bola ahmed look at i didn't even know that he could perform so stalin that he can so perform in such a way that is the, the economy is being revolutionized transformed in such a way that a poor man like me can now own a car a poor man like me cannot buy a land a poor man a poor woman like me cannot can now actually start a building project and complete it you know that those that did not vote for him will begin to say now wow even though we didn't vote for him i campaigned against him but look at me now had they been that he lost this good achievement and development i've achieved so far in his center i would have missed it this is what Bola Ahmed is supposed to be doing right now. But alas, the reverse is the case. He is proving us right. We told them that this man is incompetent. He's grossly, his, his kind of ineptitude is beyond description. We don't even understand if the man is sensitive or if he listens to news or reads papers. He has AIDS. His first step. Uh, his press secretaries and also publicity aides and all that and all that social media and all that don't they brief him his cabinet members kitchen cabinet don't they tell him don't they tell him don't they report to him the posts of the people that he feel because his age and all his assistants you know in different aspects and portfolios or with different portfolios they are living in the streets out there they are living in certain areas and whether it is urban or rural they have the contact with people they reach the people they discuss with the people they have their relative all over the country they get feedbacks you know on a first-hand account first-hand account of what is really happening down there in the street in the villages in the communities in the lga and in different states across the country what does he make of all those reports all of those reports that he has been getting he does nothing about it. He just rejoices and enjoys himself in that very Asorok. And anytime he wants to travel outside the outside the country, he travels on the private jet of the country that was bought with taxpayers' money. Of course, he doesn't feel it. He made so much money when he was the governor of Lagos State. He made so much money when he was the senator representing. I can't actually remember that senatorial district in Lagos that he represented, but he made so much money. This man has made so much money that his administration was supposed to be the best or is supposed to be the best, not the worst, but the reverse is the case. So I must continue with this very news item here coming from this very media group, Volunteer Media Advocacy for Accountable Leadership. Who will account for them? okay they have expressed worry over the recent increase in fuel price to 1000 naira per liter which has exacerbated the already challenging extreme economic conditions faced by millions of nigerians across the country okay now it continues to say the group noted that the sudden and steep hike in the cost of petrol was triggered has triggered widespread hardship pushing many citizens to further or pushing many citizens further into severe poverty and creating additional strain on businesses and households across the country that is the truth in an official press statement signed by the national coordinator augustin aminu ksm the timing of this price increase could not be more detrimental 
as Nigerians are still grappling with the economic fallout from first subsidy removal, rising inflation, and the ongoing challenges posed by unemployment and underemployment. Unemployment and underemployment. Unemployment. There is outright lack of employment. This is that there is no employment and underemployment. For instance, the ministry or government uh, institution or ministry of parastatal that is supposed to have about 20 staffs. What you have there is about five. That is what is called underemployment. So there's supposed to be 20 staffs in that very institution, in that very parastatal. Rather than 20 employment or staffs, there is five. It is called on the employment because that number cannot be able to operate and they cannot be efficient to hit the target of the ministry or the parastatal of the government. So what does it lead to? It leads to low productivity. It leads to low productivity. And those of them who are already working there in the ministry, it leads to brain drain as, as well. And also unemployment, that is the case of those who have not really gained any employment. Graduates that are churned out of the universities every year, they are not employed. They are still in the labor market. When are they going to exit the labor market? We don't know. When are they going to come out of the labor market to become productive with their certificates and their skills and expertise? We don't know. So that is what this group is citing here. The statement reads, the decision to raise fair prices at this critical juncture is not only insensitive, but also counterproductive to the government staged goals of economic removal, recovery, and poverty alleviation, even when the national minimum wage increase is yet to be implemented by both state and federal government. Have you seen that? Even when the recently increased minimum wage is yet to be implemented not only by the state government but also by the federal government recall that the uh, 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 minister of labor had announced that there is a consensus there is an agreement between the federal government and the nigerian labor congress you know uh, over the minimum wage and they agreed or the government proposed and decided to offer only seventy thousand naira rather than the previous uh, 18,000 that was later increased to 30,000, which to, it was about two states that implemented a 30,000 minimum wage, okay? So it is about three months down the line, if I'm not mistaken, it's about three months down the line that the minimum wage has been increased to 70,000 Naira. It has not been implemented. The first month upon the agreement reached had passed. There was no increment or implementation of it. The second month, the third month, there is no implementation of it. The federal government should have shown the example by starting the implementation. But the federal government has failed up until now. The state government is saying, oh, if the federal has not implemented it, we are the state. We don't have much resources. The federal government controls all the resources in all the states. The, the federal government has not implemented it. We are not going to implement it until the federal government shows the example. Okay, so we continue. According to the group, I'm quoting them now, we urge the federal government to take immediate steps to reverse the fuel price hike and explore alternative measures to address the economic ch challenges facing the nation. It is important that the government prioritizes the welfare of its citizens, particularly the most vulnerable, who are disproportionately affected by such policies. The group coordinator further said that the government, as a matter of urgency, should engage in meaningful dialogue with stakeholders, including labor unions, civil society organizations, and the private sector, to develop a more sustainable approach to managing the nation's resources and ensuring energy affordability. Nigerians deserve a government that listens to their concerns and acts in their best interest. That is the truth, but the reverse is the case. That is the fact of life. The reverse has always been the case. The current fuel price hike only serves, only serves the 
current let, let me get that let me get it correct there's something that is about to mix up here okay the current fair price hike only serves to deepen that is what it should be only serves to deepen the economic woes of the people and threatens to destabilize the social fabric of the nation it's not only thriving to it is already deepening it is already deepening the economic wounds of the people many people are suffering many people are in pain i am feeling it much less those that are not at my level i am feeling it i know how much i spend on fuel every week when you calculate it throughout the month it is so much what about feeding what about all the necessary very very important needs that we spend money routinely on i am feeling it what about the pure water seller in the street i am feeling it at my level the pain the economic woes is biting so hard we all are feeling it we can't pretend about it what about the truck pusher in the street what about that very hawker in the street who is selling plantain cheese what about that very person that is selling granite with bottle Tai Tai granite 100 naira 200 naira granite 500 naira granite what about the crayfish seller what about the the periwinkle seller okay the hawkers what about the panibita what about the vulcanizer what about the security guard at the gate of the rich man or at the gate of the filling station or at the gate of any company or business premises how do they feel about this it is biting so hard this very hike in fuel price has deepened the economic woes of the people and it it has already threatened and is still threatening not just threatening it is already destabilizing the social fabric of the nation no government has really met the expectations of Nigerians in poverty elevation. Affordable fuel price or stable fuel price, pump price, that is pump price, more especially from the NNPC, and also uh, able to regulate the price among the private filling stations. But the administration of Musa Yaradua and Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, we are far more better and promising before they were truncated. We know the history of um, how uh, 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 the former president uh, Omaru Musa Yaradua how he ended he died in office because of ill health so we were told and then uh, the former president who was his vice succeeded him and uh, completed that very tenure of their joint administration and after that he came back to context and he won and he only served for the first tenor and he was kicked out uh, by Obama and the globalists who doesn't want a viable economy in Africa and uh, leading to the enthronement of uh, the emergence of uh, Muhammad Buhari and after his exit we have seen another replica of Muhammad Buhari the worst version of it and please I am bringing this very segment of the broadcast to one end please whatever you do do not commit suicide no matter the economic condition do not commit suicide i pray for you that god will see you through in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i pray for your family and household from my office as a pastor i pray that god will lift up his favor upon you and release his blessings upon your life that from this week to the end of it and from this day to the end of this month you will not lack food in your house you will not lack everything that your heart desires that will improve your life and improve the life of those that depend on you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth amen and for me from here i want to say goodbye